Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have part two of my eyeshadow palette collection video. This look was filmed with my Jeffree Star Pink Religion collection video, uh, which I will link in the description below if you're interested. Get a little bit of a pink purple vibe. If you haven't already seen part one of my eyeshadow palette collection, I will link it both in the cards and in the description. This is the second and final part. My eyeshadow palette collection is a bit excessive. A couple disclaimers. I know I mentioned this in the first video, but in case you haven't watched that, uh, one, I have worked in the beauty industry for several years now, so my collection was not built overnight. A lot of it is stuff that I've been gifted from brands or from different places I've worked, so. Two, because I am a beauty professional, I do get a significant discount on products, therefore I try not to spend full price on anything unless I absolutely have to. And three, I do not plan on selling anything in this video. Um, I know that that can typically be an issue with these types of videos, uh, so if you are interested in seeing any of the palettes I'm selling, I will link my Poshmark down below. Without further ado, here is the second installment of my eyeshadow palette collection. As a brand, ColourPop is one of those brands that I like to hoard onto everything. As you can see, the bulk of the palettes in this drawer are ColourPop. It's pretty much my honorary ColourPop drawer. Let's get started with some of these mini ColourPop palettes. So first I have the Animal Crossing uh, quads. This is the What A Hoot quad. Just a nice neutral quad. I don't think I've played around with this one yet, but I have played around with a couple of the others. This one is Nook Ink. This one is the Aqua one. And this is the one I have used a couple times. Um, I keep trying to talk myself out of the Mint to Be palette uh, because I did purchase this one, um, but I'm really liking those Aqua tones. La Bella the Ball is more of those violet purples, lilac -y type tones, super pretty. And then of course we have Five Star Island. This one is more of the pinky with a pop of yellow. The ColourPop and Bambi palettes, I did pick up all three of these because I do like to collect Disney makeup. It is so unfortunate, um, but this one's Bambi. <laughs> this one is Flower, the more plummy one. This one's really speaking to me right now, now that we're heading, oh hi, there's me. Now that we're heading into fall, this one's really kind of catching my eye a little bit. And then my favorite out of the three is Thumper. I've just been super into these cool tones and this palette has just been super easy for everyday go-to looks. I do have this little Take Me Home palette by ColourPop. This one I got from Sephora literally years ago, like probably 2017. I don't even know how this ended up in Sephora because Sephora typically doesn't carry uh, the affordable brands, but um, it did. And I ordered it online, had it shipped to my house from Sephora, and it has been with me ever since. The Candyland Candy Castle. This one, I do have a broken shade in here. This is one of the few palettes I do have broken shades in. Um, as a whole, I would say the color story is really cute, but the quality just is not there. Um, it's definitely not a phenomenal palette. I do like to collect the ColourPop palettes. I do have a couple of these little ones. This one is the Make It Fearless. This was part of, I think it was the Make It Black campaign. I haven't played around with this one yet, but I was super excited when I saw the color story. And I think this is one I'm going to be pulling out to use in the next week or so. I really just am in love with the color story of this one. This one is from the Valentine's Day collection. This is the Melt For You palette. Um, this one I've used maybe once. Um, it did come broken and that shade had a big line in it, uh, but I was too lazy to contact them about sending me a new one because, no offense to ColourPop, but their customer service sucks pretty bad, so I felt it wasn't worth it. <laughs> I have enough eyeshadow in my collection to care about little dents like that, but still kind of a bummer. Let's go through some of my nine pans. This one is the Hello Kitty and Friends. Um, this is the Snow Much Fun palette. I believe this was a holiday palette last year. Super cute collection. Uh, colors take a little bit of building up to get to your desired pigment, um, but overall it's a really pretty easy palette to use. The Main Squeeze. I This is one of the first monochromatic uh, palettes I did purchase. Lately I've been really into red eyeshadow so this past year I've gotten more use out of this than in previous years. Um, it's a pretty palette, super cute. I also have Wine and Only. This one is another monochrome palette. This is more of the deeper reds. 
you have more of those plummy, deeper burgundy type shades. This one I haven't used yet. Oh, this is popping out. This one I haven't used yet uh, either, but it is definitely on my to use list. I have Aura and Out. This is from their pastel collection. Last summer I did pick up all three of these palettes and I do really like these. I think they're just gorgeous colors, very light uh, pastel shades. So they do take building up, but I have really enjoyed using them, especially in conjunction with other palettes. So this one is super pretty Aura and Out. Uh, the next one is In a Trance. This is currently in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. I'm working on the shade Future Self super pretty purpley blue tones. I like to use this one with my uh, Jeffree Star Bloodlust palette because those ha that has a lot of purple tones and I feel like these complement those very well. And the last one out of that trio is Miss Bliss. This is the peachy, almost more neutral one out of the three. Um, I've been using this shade, Whoa, in conjunction with a lot of my Pandas eyeshadows, uh, eyeshadows as well. I really do enjoy these. These are so pretty. This one's been a lot of fun this summer. I've been reaching for this one a lot. Strawberry Shake, my last out of the monochrome uh, plastic pan palettes. This one is pink. Um, I did get this, I believe, as like a gift with purchase or something off a of ColourPop's website. I think it was either on sale or I got it as a gift. Um, not quite, I don't remember. I've used it a couple times. Nice quality. I feel like it's nothing special. This is one of those that I probably could have done without, but I don't know. There's something about like hot pink shades like this that really pull me in. The Fine Feathered palette from ColourPop. Here we are again with the hot pink shades. Um, I don't know, I'm just a sucker for berry tones. Berry tones are some of my favorite eyeshadows on myself. Um, I have used this a few times. I do quite like this one a lot. I think it's gonna be great for fall. Definitely one of my fall picks. The Frozen 2 Anna palette. This one is another great one for fall. I really like the colors in this one. I pulled this one out around fall time the past couple years now. I've really, really enjoyed it. And the Frozen 2 Elsa palette. This one is also really pretty. This Northern Light shade is unlike any shimmer shade I've ever had in my entire life. And Ice Crystals is that silver. It reminds me a lot of Cyborg in the Anastasia Sultry palette. Um, which is my favorite shade out of that whole palette. So I was so excited to see that. In case I ever happen to hit pan on Cyborg, I have a backup right here. Next stack, we have the High Tide palette, another of the newer monochrome palettes. This one is super pretty. I haven't used this one yet, I don't think. Or if I have, I've used it in conjunction with my um, Nook Ink palette but this one was just gorgeous. There's something about aqua tones too that I don't really use them a whole lot, but they're just so pretty. She's got Solstice. This is a gorgeous palette, very well loved. One of my older, 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 it's like a year old. One of my older everyday palettes, I use this all the time for just quick, easy go-to looks, especially for work. Um, this shade Estrella has the biggest dip going on in it. Same with this one, Earth Angel, you can kind of see it. I have used the crap out of this palette. I love it so, so much. And I did do a look and review of this palette as well too. I'll link that in the cards. My The Child palette, Baby Yoda. We love a good Baby Yoda palette around here. Look how cute it is. This one is so, so pretty. I have to say, I've really started liking green eyeshadow on me. I think it's very flattering with my skin tone. Um, I just like these olive tones are just gorgeous. This I think is one of the most well done curated nine pan palettes ColourPop has ever done in my humble opinion. Definitely one of my favorites. Lil Ray of Sunshine. I went through a phase this year where I loved yellow eyeshadow on myself. Um, I hate all matte palettes and for some reason I thought because I loved yellow eyeshadow this would be a good palette to bring into my collection. Um, yeah, if you take away the yellow it's like literally just neutrals. Um, I don't think I needed this. I've used it a couple times. The quality is really good. Um, I feel like the only way I'll ever get use out of this though is if I pull it into my eyeshadow panning project. Really pretty packaging though, 10 out of 10. Another one of my everyday palettes. This is the ColourPop That's Taupe palette. As you can see, I have very much loved this palette as well. Uh, I really liked the cool tones. I know those are kind of coming back into style, especially with the like early 2000s makeup trends coming back. 
Um, this one is just a great all around palette. If I had to recommend one ColourPop palette, I think this would be my number one recommendation. A lot of really, really nice shades. I feel like this shade up here, Pebble Beach, is almost like a dupe for a twig in the Sultry palette. We all know I love myself a good Anastasia Sultry, so this has been a good dupe palette. Last few of the nine pans. This was a collection I think they did last year. Um, the Go For Baroque collection, I think. Um, so this is the Ornate palette. This one gives me really good Gryffindor vibes from Harry Potter with those yellowy reddish orange tones. This one is the Grandeur palette. Um, I have used this one a few times. It's pretty nice. It's a good for like a smoky, sultry look. I've worn this one to dinner a couple times. It's, it's pretty nice. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but it's definitely not an awful palette. And the Baroque palette, this is the bluish gray palette. This one is also really pretty. This just gives you the prettiest smoky eye. I'm not huge into those super deep, sultry, smoky looks, but this creates the prettiest smoky eye you'll ever have. I do have a couple bigger ColourPop palettes. This is the Limoncello palette. This one is super pretty. I'm currently working on the shade Capri in my panning project super pretty shades. I've liked this one for summer. It almost reminds me of the movie Luca, just kind of like that Italy vibe. Super pretty. The quality in this too is just unreal. It's so good. My Disney Designer Masquerade palette. This is another one of my well-loved favorite palettes. I wore this nearly every day when I first got this. As you can see, there's huge dips in some of these shades. Pip, uh, Frog and Wife. Lots of these have really significant use on them. Uh, and I really do like this palette. It's so cute and I never hear anybody talk about this one, but I love this one. Now I have some of my 12 pan palettes from ColourPop. We have the Rendezvous palette, which I believe was from 2018. It's been a hot minute since this has been a thing. Um, this was... Oh, they do have the names on there. For some reason, I was thinking this was from before they had the names on the palettes. Uh, this is a pretty color story. Nothing fancy. It's pretty nice. The Lizzie McGuire palette. We all know that I'm a sucker for Disney, anything. So, of course, I had to pick this one up, and I do love this one. This has been one of my favorite palettes to use this year. I just think the color story is so fun, and it inspires me to be so creative. And they just knocked a lot of these shades out of the park. Like, there's just so many amazing looks that you can do with this. And I love that it is mainly a colorful palette and that there's only a couple neutrals in here. The rest is all like that colory goodness that you could ask for. Super in love with this one. I think this is definitely in my top 10 for the year. The Zodiac by Kathleen Lights and ColourPop. I at one point had her other one, Dream Street, but I gave it to my sister forever ago. Um, and honestly, this isn't one I use a whole lot either. I tried panning the Scorpio. Um, but as you can see, I used it as an eyeliner quite a bit and it looks nearly the same. Um, this is one that I probably wouldn't go out and purchase myself anymore. Um, but at the time it just, it was astrology. It called to me. I thought it was like the next best thing. Butter Me Up palette. This, I think I'm convinced this palette was like a glitch in time. I have yet to see anybody on YouTube talk about this palette. This was an Ulta exclusive a couple years back and, um, I've literally never seen anyone use this. Uh, I, as you can see, have used it quite a bit. I did spray it down with alcohol. That's why there's like little speckles on the shade. It's not bold or anything. I sprayed it with alcohol. Um, it's overall a pretty good color story. I just don't love these tones on myself. I thought that I could like them, but I just don't love it. My Little Pony palette. This one is so fun and so cute. I always forget about this palette, but every time I pull it out, I'm pleasantly surprised by just the quality of this palette and then all the fun looks that I can come up with. It's definitely a fun one to play around with. A lot of the shades are a lot lighter, so it's really good for like springtime, you know, something a little bit more of a wash of color rather than full on pigment. Boudoir Noir. This is another holiday ColourPop palette. I really like this one too. This one really called me because of this gold and this olive, honestly. Like really, if I take out those shades, it's just another neutral palette, but I think this is gorgeous. I am trying to be better about my makeup spending. Um, so I think this is one that I would love to reintroduce myself to and get some use out of.
Wild Nothing. This one is good for very quick and easy everyday looks. It's nothing fabulous, fantastic. I've actually used it a lot more than I thought I did. For some reason, I was expecting it to be very lightly used, but as you can see, I have used quite a few of these shades several times over. It's a pretty palette. Quality is good. I feel like a lot of these bottom shades are very similar and they could have done something different, uh, but the shimmers I think are really, really pretty. I like the pop of like orangey neutral. These like the super shock type shadow is great. Off Melrose. This one was so fun. I loved playing with this one and I love every look I do with this one. It's just that very vampy like the vampy like vixen type look is what you get with this palette. I really like this and it does remind me a lot of Melrose back um in California. At Forest Sight, any grungy shadow lover's dream. This has been such a fun palette to work with. I did do a video on this palette and it is really just outstanding. It's amazing. The quality, the color story, just everything about this palette is so, so good. Love this palette to death. And the last of my 12 pans is the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon palette that I keep in the box because it just is this really pretty, like, holographic situation. Oh, this way. It's this way. It's this really pretty holographic situation, and I just like to um, keep it nice and clean. I've used this one quite a bit too. This one is really, really fun. I pulled this one out a couple times this summer and I've loved every look I've done with it. Super, super fun and of course, very nostalgic. Last pile of ColourPop palettes. I know, it's there's a lot of them. This is the Powerpuff Girls palette. This is, their, I think, one of their newest palettes. I have really liked this one. This is those uh, bigger pan sizes, kind of like the Lemoncello palette really fun color story and I've done looks that I really do like with this one. The Malibu Barbie palette. I love anything pink and Barbie and girly so of course I had to pick this one up. I've also done some fun looks with this one that I really like. Nothing too fancy but super fun to work with. Great color story. The Disney Villains Misunderstood palette. I'll be honest this is one of my favorite color pop palettes especially for shimmers in the fall time, like these just really vampy, deep shimmer shades are just everything to me. I love it. The Hocus Pocus palette. I was on a little staycation when this palette came out and I can remember sitting in the bathroom, waiting for my bath to fill up, trying to buy this palette and literally the site crashed and they had to move the launch. It was such a big deal to everybody that this launch was moved. So happy that I could get my hands on this one. I just think it's so cute. I wish that the picture, they were drawn a little bit different. I feel like it's a little bit more cartoony than necessary, but I love the vibe. And of course, this just is so, so cute. So cute. My Halloween loving heart can't even. The Disney Mulan palette. Um, I, like I said, like to collect ColourPop palettes and the ColourPop Disney ones for sure. Uh, this is one I definitely got just to go with my collection. It's not really one that I use a whole ton. I do like some of these red uh, shimmer shades. These are like pressed glitters and they are really pretty, just not ones I typically gravitate towards. The Garden Variety palette from ColourPop. This one is a lot of fun too. I really like the color story in this one, the greens, the purples, the orangey neutrals, the neutral neutrals. I just think this has everything you need for daytime, nighttime, fun looks, subtle looks, all of the above. It's just a good all around any use palette and it has succulents. Last but not least, we have the Through My Eyes palette, which is from I Love Sarah E and ColourPop. And this one is a lot of fun. I don't really use this one, but I have some fond memories of it. Uh, right after I moved to California, this was one of the, I think like two palettes I had pulled out to use. And I used the crap out of this one. I wore this to my first day of beauty school. I wore this when I got accepted into beauty school. So it has a lot of like fond memories. I do have a couple MAC palettes. I've, for the most part, decluttered a lot of my MAC quads because they just, I don't use them. I just like to look at them. Um, so this is one of the Patrick Star ones. This is the Goal Getter palette. Um, I think this is the only Patrick Star palette I have kept. This one I kept because of like the gold bronze. This like maroon burgundy shade. The Now and Zen palette. This I think came out a couple years ago, two years ago maybe. Um, very subtle color story. Quality of this one isn't amazing. Um, as you can see, I've hit hard pan in a couple of the shades, uh, but it's, it's cute. I feel like it just doesn't stay on, um, and you have to use really heavy duty primer with these. The MAC Aladdin palette. This one I actually do like. I think the colors of this are really pretty. As you can see, I've used pretty much every single shade in here. Um, 
quite a few times. Definitely has some wear and tear to it. And the color story and the packaging are just so cute. The MAC Pretty Punk palette. This one is so fun. I just, I love this palette. This one is so fun. I like to use this as a blush and I do like funny like alien-esque cut crease using these shades. It's just, I always do like the same look with this palette, but it's just such a fun look to wear. And the classic cutie, this is one I've debated decluttering several times and have actually decluttered several times, but for whatever reason, I keep pulling it back into my drawers. So I don't know if it's going to stay around. I really should just like bite the bullet and get rid of it. But for some reason, like some of these purple shades really draw, like draw me in. I don't need this because I have other purple palettes, but I just can't. Plus it smiles at you and I can't get rid of anything that looks that cute. I do have a BH Cosmetics palette. This is, I think, the only one um, from BH I own anymore, and this is the Weekend Festival palette. It is one of their festival palettes from a couple years ago. I believe they do one every single year. Uh, this one, I think, was from 2018 or 2019. I can't remember. Color story is great. The quality is fun. Um, I just get a little stumped when I look at this palette. This is more one that I reach in for for specific shades because just kind of looking at it, kind of stumps me a little bit in terms of creating cohesive looks, uh, but it's a cute palette, good quality. We have a few miscellaneous ones here, the Bright Lights by Pinky Rose. This one is a fun one. Um, I got this when Riley Rose was a thing. I don't know if Riley Rose is, is that still a thing that is around? They used to have one at Mall of America in Minnesota. I used to go there all the time. Great palette. I did my Billie Eilish look using this color. This is from Wet n Wild. This is the Spongebob Nautical Nonsense palette. Haven't used this one yet, but I am a big Spongebob fan, so I did pick this up in hopes of using it. I just have not gotten around to it yet. One day. The Zulu by Juvia's Place. This is, I think, my only remaining Juvia's Place palette. I do really like this one. It is some of my favorite uh, matte bright eyeshadows, the pink, the yellow, this purple. They're just really, really good quality, long-lasting cannot ask for anything better. And the last one from that stack is the I'll Be There For You palette by Peachy Queen. This is an indie brand. I did purchase a couple palettes to do some videos on and then I just ended up getting rid of one of them. I think the Malibu palette I sold on my Poshmark. Um, but I haven't used this one yet. I kept it because it's friends and I did want to eventually do a video on it, but I'm not even sure you can get this anymore. So I might not even get around to that. Maybe this will be just a fun like get ready with me palette. Last couple palettes from that drawer. We have two of these e.l.f. bite size uh, quads. This first one is in the shade Truffles. It's, oh, it's not even open. I haven't even used it yet. You can kind of see it's just like a neutral quad. Um, and then this one is the shade Rosewater, which is more of kind of like the Naked 3 vibes. It's cute. I used to keep this one in my car. Um, because working in a salon, you have to do your makeup every day. And this was just my quick emergency palette. Um, I do have the Smashbox and Vlada palette. This is actually the Cover Shot Petal Metal palette, just with the fancy packaging. This was a really cute little palette. This has just any rose gold shimmer you could think of. So very basic. The Luminous and Sir John Lion King palette, again with my obsession with Disney makeup. I do really like the quality of this. I wish there was some lighter transitions, but I do understand that this is not made for every single skin tone out there in the world, um, and this would work great on deeper skin tones. The NYX Avant Pop palette. This is so old. Nouveau Chic, I think, is the, the one it is. I, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how old this is. This has got to be at least like six years old at this point, and I don't even keep it to use it. I keep it because it was one of my first makeup items ever, and I just, I can't bear to part with it. I used to wear this to school every day. Like, this was my go-to high school palette. Like, I used the absolute crap out of this, and I was so scared of these deeper shades. The last palette in that drawer is from Morphe, and this is my 9N palette. I have decluttered most of my Morphe palettes at this point just because, as a brand, I feel like... I don't know, they're just a little bit all over the place. Um, and I've just also realized I prefer smaller curated palettes. I did keep this one because it, it's just a really nice color story and I believe I got this as gratis when I worked at Ulta. Um, it's a cute palette and I do like the colors, but as a whole, I think Morphe quality just isn't as good as some of the other palettes out there. Speaking of Morphe, we're moving down into my final drawer. This is where I keep my bulky overflow palettes. 
Um, so the first ones we have are from Morphe. This is the original Jaclyn Hill palette. Um, I know a lot of people loved this to death. I just feel like I could not get into it the way other people did. I mean, it's a great palette, great color story, but it's just not as inspiring to me as some of the other palettes out there. The Morphe, what is this? I think this is the 35B palette. They redid this palette, I think, with the Lisa Frank collection. And this has some fun, colorful shades. You have just about everything you can like need in a palette. Definitely one of the best colorful palettes from back in the older makeup days. I just could not bear to part with it just because of how much, how much I've used this and all the memories I have with this palette. So while I did declutter most of my Morphe palettes, I did have to keep this one. The Morphe and Coca-Cola palette, I think from last year, this is the Thirst for Life palette. Why I purchased this after I had already decided that I did not need Morphe palettes because the quality just is not there for me, like some of the other shadows. I have so many high-end shadows that have amazing quality. I really don't know why I keep purchasing these, but for some reason I had to get this. I'm, I just have an impulsive shopping problem. We're not going to talk about it. The Morphe and Maddie Ziegler palette. I loved Dance Moms. I can't even open it. I loved Dance Moms growing up. So I wanted to get this to support Maddie. And this shade right here, God Mom, is like literally the prettiest shimmer shade I think I've ever seen in my entire life. The rest of this palette is just pretty average, I would say. I mean, the quality is amazing in this palette compared to other Morphe palettes. Um, but the color story, I feel like, is just pretty average. It's just neutrals. And honestly, I don't need neutrals in my collection. Um, I have so many neutrals already. Uh, but it's a cute palette. It's a cute palette. And it has, like, the cute little Maddie Ziegler face on there. The last Morphe palette I have to talk about, this is the older Morphe Pride palette. I have also used and abused the crap out of this palette. Can't even angle it right. How do I, okay, you can kind of see it like that. Uh, I have used the absolute crap out of this palette. Um, this matte white has seen better days for sure. Um, some of these shimmers have hard pan in it from me scraping down into there. Um, the black is pretty good. I feel like it's a good range of colors. Uh, if I wasn't concerned about having shades I wouldn't use, I'd totally get the new Morphe Pride palette that they came out with. But I just feel like I'm just at a point where I need to stop buying big palettes because they just stress me out when I do my makeup with them. So now we have all of my Jeffree Star palettes. I do know that he is relatively controversial here on the internet. Uh, the fact of the matter is a lot of these palettes have been purchased for me or I've had prior to all the drama coming out. Um, and I'm not going to not use them if I've already spent the money on them is kind of my mindset. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be showcasing any of these. This one is the Blue Blood uh, palette, if you are interested. Super pretty. Um, like I was saying, I don't know if I'm going to be showcasing any of these like in their own individual videos on my channel, um, other than just for sheer review purposes, but they are, you know, they are really good quality. I can't, I can't deny that. Um, this is the Conspiracy palette. I have used the heck out of mine, as you can see. She has definitely seen better days. I took this with me on my four week trip to Reno and used these shadows nearly every single day of that trip, especially this top row. I was just doing very basic neutrals. Um, I do really like a lot of these uh, deeper shades as well. Good quality. I cannot tell you how hard it was to get my hands on this palette when it came out. Um, I have the Androgyny palette. Uh, this one, is not my favorite out of them. I do really like this shade up here, Safe Word. Uh, but overall, I mean, I don't feel like it's anything special. I feel like it's a grungy, grungy lover's dream. I um, mean, I do like some of these deeper tones, but not really what I reach for that much. Now that I'm looking at it though, like, oh my gosh, I'm like sitting here talking about how I'm not inspired by it. But now that I'm like looking at it and putting together all these looks that I could do, anyway, I'm gonna have to pull this one out. Jawbreaker. This is, again, one of my favorite rainbow palettes. I have used this in nearly every single rainbow look in like conjunction with my Morphe 35, what was that, 25B, the Rainbow Pride palette. Um, this is a great, great rainbow palette if you are looking for rainbow shades. Um, a lot of these are really, really good quality. This one, Snack, is really pretty on the lid. I do have the Alien palette. When this came out, I had posted a picture of this on my Instagram and Jeffree Star liked my photo and it was like, I died that day. Um, I freaked out internally. It was the first time a makeup brand had ever noticed me. Um, 
just after that, Natasha Denona reposted something on her story. So anyway, beside the point. The point is, this is a really pretty cool tone story. I think this is one of the most unique color stories out there um, in eyeshadow palette history. I love the tones in here. I'm scared to use this shade because I really love the imprint. And I know you can't get this palette anymore. So I'm like scared to ruin some of these shades. But it's super pretty. I love this palette a lot. It's definitely one of my favorites from him. Blood Sugar. I have the White Trunk Edition. Um, I think that this was some sort of anniversary type situation. Uh, it's very, very messy. So I'm going to I keep the plastic in there to keep the top part clean. Um, but as you can see, it is super, super messy. But I kind of like that about it. You know, it's like, ooh, it's like a uses palette. Uh, this one is really pretty too. Very neutral and easy to work with. But you have some of those red tones. And like I said, I've really been liking red tones on myself lately so it's been it's been fun the blood and money palette this one i think is like up there some, one of my favorites from jeffree star i really like the greens um this gold is just like everything to me i love these two shades together ceo and emerald state they're chef's kiss together it is a great quality palette and the color story is just really fun and different i really like an all green palette i think it's it's fun I feel like I just keep saying the same things about all of the palettes, but I don't know. Like to me, just makeup is just fun. The Bloodlust palette. I love this palette with all my heart. As you can see, this is my favorite purple eyeshadow. I love using Deviant with Vivid Mood. I think it's a gorgeous combination. Uh, Take the Crown, I've used quite a few times over the past month. Uh, Blood Queen is a nice deepening up type shade. These shimmers in the middle, Sworn Enemy and Pink Magic, just have that really foiled, chunky feel to it. It's really just fun texture-wise in this palette. Bleeding Heart, I think, is one of the more disappointing shades. I really just use that as an inner corner type shade because it's not super red on the eyelid. Um, it's more of like a deep pink, but overall it's a cute palette and luxurious. I have some smaller palettes. Uh, the last of my big Jeffree Star palettes is the Thirsty palette. This one is a summer palette from literally forever ago. Um, it's seen better days, but it's not nearly as used as some of my other palettes. I do like the shade Taste Buds. That one's a pretty shade. These shimmers are not my favorite from him. I feel like he tried a different texture, if I'm remembering correctly, in this palette. And it just was not the vibe to me. But overall, it's a nice, fun palette. The Star Ranch palette, this is his newest palette. This is a Mystery Box exclusive palette. Um, so I had always wanted a Mystery Box and I did pick up a box that had this one in there. It's a pretty simple color story. It's very much Wyoming themed. You can very much see like Wyoming mountain, farm, prairie type landscapes in the colors in this palette. Great quality. The shimmers are amazing. I really like Casper Mountain. That's just such a like, gorgeous, gorgeous shade in here. Star Creek is really nice too. I think out of all of this palette, the only one I haven't used is Winter Wind yet. Overall, it's a good, uh, good palette and I do plan on doing a video tutorial with this. The Mini Controversy palette, I do have the original one that doesn't have the green shade and I kind of wish I had the one that had the green shade. Um, I like this palette as like an everyday palette. You have some fun kind of shimmery pops with the blue and the maroon. Um, it's a good palette. It's a good quality palette. I used to keep this one in my school bag and use it to do my school makeup every morning. Mini Breaker. This is the mini Jawbreaker palette. This orange is just stunning. It is probably the most pigmented bright orange eyeshadow you will ever see um, and bubblegum as well as a really bright pink eyeshadow. It's a great quality palette and last but not least I do keep most of my single eyeshadows in a different uh, drawer but my Jeffree Star eyeshadows because they have like the little Jeffree um, magnetic palette. This came in my mystery box as well. Um, I do keep this with my other Jeffree palettes um, because I don't typically reach for single shadows a whole lot and I did want to get some use out of this before I move it into my singles drawer. Um, these are pretty cute shades. These two are out of the uh, Jawbreaker palette. This one up here I think is an actual unique single shade so unfortunately I do already have these two shades but I mean it's nice to have backups I guess if I end up somehow using the whole thing. Um, it's, it's nice though. I do want to see if he comes out with new shades uh, to put in here.
And the last palette is my Storybook Cosmetics Burn Book Palette. This one I really just use as a display piece, if we're being honest. I don't think I've ever actually used this, but it's pink, it's Mean Girls, and my room is themed pink, so I like to have this as a display item. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little collection video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye!